Hey guys, hello everyone and welcome to the channel. So if you are a research scholar and if you are planning to do further research, be it in the form of PhD or postdoc and if you are planning to do especially from institute and universities in USA, then this video is going to be very important for you because I am going to talk about a lot of things which are happening in USA, uh, a lot of uh, new rules, you can say a lot of new uh, like things happening around in political world which is affecting the research institutes, the research funding and hiring of research scholars. So we will talk about that in detail in this video so that you can take an informed decision about your career because if you are someone who is still in uh, India or in uh, some other country and planning to come to US, you can take an informed decision after uh, watching this video after understanding the scenario which is going on all right first of all let me tell you that i am currently in us i am doing my postdoc here okay it's been more than a year over here those who are connected to me on instagram and on linkedin or on twitter they might be already aware about it in case if you are not connected to me on any other social media platform the links are there in the description of this video you can connect me over there uh, you can follow me on Instagram, on LinkedIn and on Twitter so that you can have uh, like you can have a discussion if you want to discuss anything out in my DM. Okay, coming to the actual scenario which is going on. Okay, so first of all, I think you are already aware about it that uh, in the January, uh, a new government is formed in uh, US. Elections were done in last year, but uh, the change of power was done in January. And ever since the new government came, there are many new things which has been introduced. A lot of things has been changed. A lot of things has been included. A lot of rules which have, which were old, they have been uh, modified. Among all these other things, there is one thing which has affected uh, the research community and which is funding of NIH. Before going into all these things, let me first of all explain you the funding scenario in US. Okay, Because if you understand that, then whatever I am going to say make will make more sense. Okay, so. Uh, in US, uh, the funding of an institute or a particular lab is very different than how we do it in India. Okay, In India, uh, the salary of a PI is fixed and that is given by university or by government. Uh, then scholars also get funded by institutes like if you have, if you have JRF, CSIR JRF, UGC JRF, DBT JRF. So those institutes directly pay to the scholar. Okay, But in US, it is not like that. In US, a particular lab let's say if i am a research if i am a pi okay if i have a lab so i have to write a grant to funding agencies and those funding agencies are going to re review my grant review my proposal basically and they are going to provide me certain money let's say they provided me with 100 rupees okay just to explain you let let me just tell you uh, with a smaller value let's say the funding agency has given me 100 rupees now out of those that 100 rupees certain amount will be taken by the institute in which I have my lab. Let's say my lab is in University X. Okay, So University X is going to take 40 rupees out of that 100 and now I am left out with 60 rupees. In that 60 rupees, I have to take care of the lab. I have to take care of everyone which I am hiring in the lab, be it postdoc, be it a research scholars, I mean graduate students or PhD students. Okay, uh, So I have to pay them. Okay, I have to pay certain salaries to them, certain uh, amount to them every month and that will be deducted from that 60 rupees which I have. Also, I have to take care about if I have to purchase anything in the lab, if I have to uh, buy chemicals, if I have to maintain the lab. So, everything is going to be covered in that 60 rupees which I have. So, basically a lab, how the lab functions is going to depend upon uh, this funding agency, whether how much money I am going to get, whether my grant will be accepted or not. And if I write a proposal, whether that grant is approved or not. If the grant is approved, I have enough money to run my lab. If the grant is not approved, I don't have money to run my lab. I can't hire more people. Okay, so this is how things go. Now, so in US, the major funding agency is NIH, okay, National Institute of Health. And uh, how these in, uh, institutes get funding? So government gives certain amount to that in, uh, to NIH. Okay, so let's say in a year government give 1000 rupees to NIH and NIH uh, like a lot of different labs submit their proposal to NIH. NIH goes through these proposals and those proposals which NIH likes, they give that 1000 rupees, they, they distribute among those labs. Okay, So this is how the overall scenario goes. Now recently the new government, they have slashed down funding of NIH with a very big amount, Okay, a very high margin slash has been done in the funding of NIH. 
Now, if NIH is not having, let's say earlier NIH was having 1000 rupees, now NIH only has 300 or 400 rupees. So, now since NIH has less money, so the number of proposals which will be accepted is also going to decline or it is going to be less and the amount of funding which NIH is going to give to labs is also going to reduce. That is what has happened. So, lot of proposals which were submitted to NIH uh, have been either declined or they are given with slash uh, slightly less amount or they are either not accepted. Okay. So, this time uh, or in this particular cycle of academic cycle I would say a lot of labs have not received their or they have not got any grant from NIH. Now, since they have not got a grant from NIH that is going to affect their lab uh, routine or their lab work directly. They cannot hire new people, they cannot hire postdocs, they cannot hire graduate students and that is why a lot of freeze in uh, like in the in this hiring has been seen. So, recently lot of institutes they have declared that they have done a freeze in hiring okay, or hiring freeze that is what they are calling it. So, hiring freeze means for a certain amount of time they are not going to hire anybody, neither new postdocs, neither uh, like more graduate student, a very less amount of or very less number of graduate students are going to be hired okay. and that has affected this particular, particularly this cycle of academic. Okay. So, this sp uh, starting from January till I would say till the next June, this is going to stay affected if nothing new comes in the rule. Okay. Or if the rule remains same, then it could be extended more. So, recently if you, if you are following news, there are a lot of universities including uh, Stanford University, including MIT, including Harvard, including even uh, Boston University. There are a lot of like these all these top universities they have uh, just made this clear that they are not going to hire new staff. New staff means in the staff it comes postdocs even they are not going to hire new like uh, people I mean new lab or new PI ok. So, getting a new somebody who is at the verge of their career want to start a new lab it is going to be difficult for them. Particularly this is going to be very difficult for someone from countries like India or somewhere who are planning to do their further research in US. So, if you are someone who is applying for postdoc or who is applying for a PhD in US, there are high chances that very less labs are going to respond to you or very less labs are going to show interest to hire you because technically they do not have fund. Okay. So, this is the whole whole scenario. Okay. This is the whole thing which is going on. Now, why I am making this video because I just wanted to let you guys know about it because there are many students who do not even know. I am getting a lot of messages on LinkedIn in the last many days like I used I used to keep getting messages about it that I am applying to these many labs and I am not getting any reply from them. This could be one of the reason because they do not have fund so they are not able to reply you. Also this is going to give you a broader view and you should have this thing in mind that okay in US now their scenario is in such a way that fundings are there is problem with funding. So, you cannot just wait uh, like sit and wait for uh, all these things to get settled down because you do not know okay politics and all these things how much time it takes you do not know about it. Okay. So, what you can do now? If you are in India and you want to do PhD from abroad and if you were only targeting US or universities of US now you can broaden your view. You can look upon other universities especially those who are in uh, Europe okay you can look for uh, various different universities in Europe you can even look for universities in Japan you can look for universities in Taiwan there are various different places you you can even look in Singapore so there are various different places you can look for you can also keep looking for that in US but as I have mentioned the chances of getting selection could be low okay so that is one thing which you have to keep in mind so having that in mind you can now start your search and broaden your search do not just stick to a particular country that okay I just want to do my research from US that should not be in your mind now. You should broaden up your search and try to look for different other places. One more thing which is an alternative which you can do is uh, look for those fellowships especially if you are uh, applying for postdoc or for PhD there are certain fellowships like uh, there is a Nehru uh, uh, Fulbright fellowship okay which is slightly competitive I would say it is not easy to get that but try to apply for that. If you get that fellowship in that case you do not have to rely on the lab to get funding ok you will have your own fellowship. 
and uh, in that case if you get a fellowship then you will be easily getting a postdoc or a phd position okay then it will be very easy for you so just like uh, nehru fulbright fellowship there are various other fellowships as well please google about it all these fellowships which are there like uh, for europe there is marie curie fellowship you might already know about it uh, but in us there are other fellowships as well please look upon that and uh, try to apply for them okay if you are applying for a particular lab if you are very dedicated or if you are following a particular lab and want to specifically go in that lab and do research then you can mention in your mail that you are also interested to apply for these fellowships in that case that lab or that pi might might think of you to think of taking you and uh, writing a grant with you or writing a proposal with you so that you can apply for that fellowship and once the fellowship get approved you can join that lab so basically the overall idea of making this video is to make you guys aware about it that the things around in usa is not stable right now especially if you talk about academia uh, labs are suffering they are struggling to survive and uh, this is all because of the funding cut in nih okay so let's wait and hope that things get settled down soon but for you guys if you are from india or from other uh, places and want to apply in us don't just wait for this thing to get settled down because your time is precious you cannot just waste that time on waiting for this opportunity to come okay so keep looking for other opportunities and keep applying in different places all right so that's it from my side for this particular video and uh, if you guys have any other question you can ask me down in the comment section below as i mentioned i am on other social media platforms as well please join me if you want to follow me on those platforms links are there in the description of this video and um, i will see you guys in the next video take care bye bye